wanted to do something a little bit different um, to get started on today's video. So I just got this new Oracle deck, Woodland Wardens by Jessica Rue. I am obsessed with Jessica's artwork. I'm currently taking her online course for illustration and it's a bit challenging for me. I'm not the best drawer, but I have been trying to dive into more art. Um, I really enjoy like painting and everything, but drawing, like illustrating specifically, is a bit more of a challenge for me. So to start out, I thought that I would go ahead and pull one of these cards and kind of read for you what um, what we got for the day. This isn't something I want to do in every video. I just because I just got this deck, I'm really trying to get familiar with it, and one of the ways that I do so is that I spend a lot of time with it. And I don't necessarily always do a reading when I spend time with it. Sometimes I will just be shuffling it on the so like as I'm watching TV. Um, that's so funny. This card came out the other day. I typically just like spend some time shuffling it. I will sleep with it under my pillow just to get familiar with it, and then I'll do like an interview tarot spread which I have included one on my Instagram I haven't included it on TikTok but I put it on Instagram um, just a interview spread that you can do with any new deck whether it be Oracle or tarot this card has come out for me um, quite a few times and it is the porcupine I don't know how to pronounce this flower anemone perhaps um, but this card represents boundaries this card upright which we had it upright says you cannot help others unless you first help yourself maintain healthy boundaries around your time and energy giving generously only once you are sufficiently fed the recurring theme for me lately has been you cannot pour from an empty cup We are going to be doing some crafts. So we're gonna be crafting our own broom. Now, as a witch, you are probably most familiar with the depiction of a witch riding a broomstick. It was believed that witches would ride their brooms to the Sabbaths to celebrate with each other, with their coven, and also even celebrate and dance with the devil. It was also believed that witches had certain anointments that they would use to anoint the broom and themselves to travel this way. This is often why you may hear about like flying anointment oil, which essentially is using concoctions of certain herbs that associate with with and aid you in flight. It is an amazing experience. Um, my only thing is like when you are looking into flying anointment oils, make sure that you are just so careful about who you are purchasing it from. Make sure that they are safe to use. For example, one ingredient that can be used for flight, which is flight, is going to be mugwort. Mugwort is one of those herbs that you have to be careful about consuming, especially if you are pregnant or if you have any other sort of like illnesses. Just make sure that you talk with your physician or talk with you know, someone who has a lot of experience when it comes to working with herbs. I have personally used mugwort in a sense where um, I've drank it as a tea with other herbs that are, you know, complementary to it to help me kind of get into that meditative state of mind. I may do more like content in, in regards to actual projection and just like my personal experiences with that, um, but this is not that video. Now, the broom is also used in a mundane way, which I'm sure we are all familiar with. Broom is also used to physically cleanse the space, but it's also used to energetically cleanse the space. So we may use smaller brooms to clean our altar space, and we may also use the broom to clean our physical space. There is that folk tradition that when you are cleaning or cleansing your space to start from the back of the home and work your way front and that way you are essentially like collecting all of the negative energy and pushing it out and then also dumping the remnants of you know what you pick up from the broom a crossroads so that it is far away or like at the end of your driveway make sure that you completely dispose of the remnants that you collect when you are brooming as soon as it's done otherwise if that is just like staying in your trash can 
that I feel like, you know, for me personally, that feels like it's just like sitting stagnant. It's just not collected throughout the space. It's just like there. So the broom is not only used to banish things in the home, but it's also used to bless the home. So there are many other folk traditions in regards to the broom. It's said that it's bad luck to bring an old broom with you into a new home. So if you are moving into a new space, disregard the old broom and and bring in a new one. This is also a really great time to make your own broom, especially in your new home. Um, that just feels like, again, very new energy. That, that specific broom is like, you know, dedicated to your new space. So to make your broom is actually quite simple. It also makes it so much more magical because you're using your own energy and crafting a tool that you're gonna be using in your practice. It's such an intimate experience and this is why for me personally, I like to craft a lot of the tools that I use in my practice because there's just something super intimate about it, knowing that I put my energy into this tool and I'm gonna be using it often throughout my craft. You know, as a folk practitioner, we use what we have. And when I wanted to make my own broom, I, I was really patient in terms of like gathering materials. Um, I didn't wanna go to my local store, but you are still able to do that do what you can, do what feels right to you. There's no right or wrong way. This is just my personal approach. I wanted to forge all of the materials that I could for my broom. You're gonna need a branch. I was able to find so many branches that had already fallen off, especially from a tree that really resonates with you. So for example, I have a lot of dogwoods around me. I have a lot of oak trees around me. I simply just kind of kept my eyes open for a stick that I felt like would be a good fit for my broom and it's kind of funny because when I chose this branch it wasn't necessarily with the idea of a broom in mind it just resonated with me I found it on my walk and I just kind of carried it around I wasn't even sure if I was gonna like take it but it felt right I took it home with me and I knew that I could use it for something and I felt like I should use it for something and that's when I knew that like it was um, it was kind of right for me. We'll also need some straw. So you can find some at the store at your local craft store. Where I'm located, we have a lot of switchgrass. And I did happen to find, I don't know if it was the landscapers, but it was like a bunch of switchgrass that had been like cut down and I guess like thrown or maybe it was just like old, I don't know, it maybe it was something that the landscapers were using and they just kind of threw it um, into the woods. So I found like this huge pile of switchgrass and I was like, this is perfect material for my broom. And I just gathered as much as I could that made sense for my broom. When you are foraging these natural materials, um, I always like to give thanks back to the land spirits in the form of carrots or lettuce because I do have a lot of rabbits that live around me. So that's my way of um, giving back. Your traditional offerings for land spirits are honey and milk, which is used across many different cultures. So once you have your branch and your straw, you're going to gather the straw around the branch and you're going to need some cord or twine to hold the straw together. This is another opportunity to really infuse your energy into this tool that you're gonna be using in your practice. So as you are wrapping the cord around the straw, you can either say an incantation if you have one written down for like blessing items, or you can say a prayer, um, whatever resonates with you in your practice. I will tie a knot and simply seal the energy into my magical tool and it's complete. This is when you can get pretty creative with your broom. It all depends on, again, what's available to you, what resonates with you, but make it your own. This is something that you're gonna be using in your practice. This is something that, you know, you're going to hang on your wall, whatever it is that you wanna use it for. This is an opportunity to decorate it with charms, decorate it with some um, plants, some florals, especially ones that resonate with you. For me, I chose chamomile and lavender. Chamomile is an herb ally for me. I have worked with chamomile for a really long time. It is one that I 
use for a lot of protection workings and it's also one that I have used for prosperity as well. Because I'm gonna be using this broom for protection around my space as well as protection for me during any sort of hedge crossing or meditative states, I wanted to incorporate chamomile into the broom. So I simply just kind of tucked chamomile um, underneath the cord so that it was secure. Then I also wanted to incorporate lavender. Lavender is yet another herb ally of mine. It is great when it comes to calming, soothing energy. And as someone who struggles with anxiety, lavender has become my best friend. Lavender has also helped me in love workings to strengthen my own relationship with myself. And it has also helped me with protection. To tie it all together, I used green yarn. Green is very grounding to me. It reminds me of the mountains, the earth, and just spending time outside. Broom is going to be used in grounding practices and meditations. I wanted to use green to correspond to that. I once again took this opportunity to infuse my energy as I tied the green yarn around and used a little bit of knot magic to tie the bow and finalize my broom for my practice. You may decide to store it near your altar space or hang it somewhere for protection. It is entirely up to you what you decide to do with it. As always, thank you so much for joining me and I hope you enjoy your broom. I hope you get crafty and I hope that it's something that resonates with you for a really long time and something that you can use in your practice. Thanks again for being here and I'll see you next time.